الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له عالم السر والنجوى وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى كلمة التقوى اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أئمة العلم والهدى وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد أيها المسلمون Believing brothers and sisters We are uh, in the 11th month of the Zionist genocidal campaign in Gaza and I know especially in the beginning uh, almost 11 months ago it was very difficult for Muslims to speak about uh, this issue and Muslims were feeling afraid to say anything because of the fear of repercussions even here in this, in this country. Uh, but as time went on and the, that genocidal campaign continued, Muslims have become bolder and bolder in speaking about the issue and not only Muslims, uh, many non-Muslims have been speaking about it also and trying to get uh, the genocide to stop. Um, I'm not sure how much this matter has been discussed in any uh, masjid uh, because we are still sort of hesitant to, to speak about it and to discuss it. But it's a matter that needs discussion and needs addressing by, by various khatibs and so on. Uh, so many deaths have occurred, so much uh, terrible dis destruction in Gaza. We Muslims, the entire Ummah, feeling you know, helpless, confused, embarrassed about the situation. Embarrassed because when we are asked, you know, what is the Ummah doing about it? What are Muslims, Muslim countries and so on doing about it? We have no answer. We are, we are feeling that frustration that the West and the East are incapable of stopping the war, not just the West and Western countries. The entire world, the West and the East, is incapable of stopping this war. We feel anger at Muslim countries, Islamic countries, for doing nothing. And if they're doing anything, it is to prevent their peoples from doing something. We feel alarm that some Arab regimes are even siding with the enemy. So all of these feelings are going through us. I'm sure you're feeling it. Every time you see something uh, uh, on this issue, every time you watch a video, hear what uh, others are saying about it, uh, you, you feel all of these feelings in your heart. Uh, what can we do about it? First, we have to talk about it. So, even you know, if it was less than this, this would have been perhaps sufficient to weaken our iman. Uh, and the question that arises is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing about it. Has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, not heard the du'as of those people of the Gazans and the Palestinians not seen their suffering, not heard the du'as of the Ummah all over the world and so on. Uh, is, is, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing about it? Uh, so that question uh, can perhaps lead to the weakening of Iman among us. And of course it should not be so. We need to look at it from a different perspective. If we do look at things from a different perspective, an Islamic, perspective, a Quranic perspective, a prophetic perspective, then we would perhaps be relieved of a lot of these feelings. Our state of confusion can be likened to some extent to the Sahaba, that of the Sahaba at the time of Hudaybiyah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. After it was signed, Omar radiallahu anhu who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, you know, are you not the messenger of Allah? Are we not the believers? 
So perhaps in his mind, just as in the mind of many of us today, if we are following the right religion, then why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not helping us? If the Prophet sallam, that we believe in is the true messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then why is Allah not helping him? Why is Allah not helping his ummah, his, the, those who believe in him? And then Surah Al-Fatih was revealed, Al-Fatih, which means the victory. And after this, Umar asked, the Prophet was amazed when this surah was revealed, is it really a fatha? Is it really a victory? Yes, Hudaybiyah was a victory for Muslims. <clears throat> and in it, in Surah al fatih Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions His promise. And his promise is mentioned in many other surahs in the Quran. In the Wa'ad Allahi Haqq. Indeed, the promise of Allah is true. Uh, and this is something that we as Muslims should be confident about. We should have absolute faith in this. In the Wa'ad Allahi Haqq. Indeed, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true. What is the promise of Allah? Uh, uh, let me just go to a few places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his promise. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ And we have written, we have decreed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed in the Zabur, before the Dhikr, Dhikr, the reminder. And what is the reminder Allah is talking about here? It is the Torah, as mentioned by most of the scholars. Before the, the, the that is after the Torah was revealed. So, Mimba the Dhikr, after the Dhikr. And al Arda Yarithuha Ibadi Salihun, that the earth will be inherited by our righteous servants. When we look into the Bible, just quickly, when we look into the Bible, we look into the Psalms, which is the Psalms of David, uh, which are supposed to be the Zabur, uh, they have a statement there, there is a statement there, uh, that the meek shall inherit the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrects that here, it's not the meek. In al arda yarithuha ibadiya salihun. My righteous servants, they are the ones who will inherit the earth. So this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah the safat Allah says, وَلَقَدْ سَبَقَتْ كَلِمَتُنَا لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْصُورُونَ وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ It has already preceded, our word has already preceded. لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ To our servants. The messengers, innahum uh, lahum al-mansurun, that they will be helped. They will have the help of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Wa inna jundana lahum al-ghalibun, and our armies, they will be the victorious. They will be the vanquishing, not the vanquished. The vanquishing, those who are defeating the others. <clears throat> and in Surah Al-Mujadila, and this is uh, just uh, three out of many places in the Qur'an. كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَأَغْلِبَنَّ أَنَا وَرُسُلِي Allah says, I have written, Allah has written, Allah has decreed that I will be the vanquisher. I will be the one to defeat the enemies. I will overcome them, overcome them overpower them. Ana wa rusuli, I and my messengers. In Allah qawiyun aziz. Indeed, Allah is mighty. Allah is powerful and mighty. <coughs> so we see today the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unfolding. Qadr, the decree of Allah, the destiny that He wants for, the, for ourselves, for the ummah, for this world. We see that unfolding in front of us, perhaps uh, like in no other case, 
it is so clear, it is becoming so clear with, because of what is happening uh, in the Middle East uh, there, in Gaza. Uh, not only Gaza, because they had, uh, uh, you know, everybody is saying now because of the situation, what is happening there, uh, that uh, uh, the Zionists are now extending it uh, to the West Bank, what they call Judea and Som Samaria. They're extending this fight and trying to uh, rid themselves of the Palestinians. But what is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they, it will be that they will be defeated. The outcome will be as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, according to his qadr, according to what, uh, to his kitab, or what he has written down, what he has decreed to happen. And we see that plainly in the beginning part of Surah Al-Isra. And I want to say a few words about this. We cannot go into a deep explanation of the surah, uh, or even these verses of the surah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنَ وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عُلُوًا كَبِيرًا And we decreed for Bani Israel, the children of Israel, that you will do corruption in the land twice and you will become extremely haughty and arrogant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two things that he had, has decreed for Bani Israel in this ayah, uh, which is uh, ayah number four in the surah. You will do corruption in the land two times. In which land? In the Holy Land. They had done it once already, which everybody has agreed on, all of the, our Mufassirin and so on agreed on, that already took place in history. Uh, and this is great corruption. It's not ordinary corruption because in every nation you have corrupt people. You do have corruption taking place all over the world, in every nation, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not talking about ordinary corruption. This is big, big time corruption for Bani Israel. And the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with them in such a way uh, that they never had power back until recent times. Maratain, two times. Two times that will happen, so that first time already took place. Uh, and many, unfortunately, you know, many of um, Mufassirin have said a lot of things, uh, but they are uh, present day scholars, uh, and many of them are being asked about it. Is, it, is this the time when it, when it is happening, when that second time is happening? Is this the second time? Uh, and uh, many of them are hesitant to say, yes, it is. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about in the surah. Some of them have been very bold in saying, yes, it is the time. This is the time of that second great corruption of Bani Israel. Uh, and kabira, uh, when you will reach such great heights of arrogance. Uh, and but uh, as I mentioned, some, uh, some scholars are hesitant to say that. We don't know if, if this is the case. But we are seeing it all around us now. We are seeing what is happening today. And how can we be so you know, uncertain about the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is being realized in our time now. And how is that so? You know, when, the, when we look at the other verses that come after this, uh, those scholars who are hesitant to say, yes, this is the time, they just pass over what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said without looking at, uh, at, uh, at what he has said specifically, you know, deeply, without looking deeply at, the, uh, 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 at those things. So uh, even this statement, wala ta'aluna uluan kabir, you will re reach great heights of arrogance. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same term uh, for Fir'aun. And Bani Israel are aware of that because they went through that, right? They went through that situation with Fir'aun uh, many uh, millennia ago. In the Fir'aun ala fil ard. Fir'aun became very high in the land, very high and haughty in the land. 
but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mention about Fir'aun, even Fir'aun doesn't mention about him. Allah does mention this about Bani Israel for the second time, but not about even fair Pharaoh. Fair, uh, Fair'aun reached such a heights of arrogance. Perhaps Bani Israel these days have reached even further than that. Uluwan Kabira, which is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say about Fir'aun. And then goes on to say, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِبَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الْدِيَارِ وَكَانَ وَعَدَ مَفْعُولًا So when the first of the two promises, here the word promise is used. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ You know, referring to the وَعَدُ أُولَاهُمَا وَعَد means promise. When the promise of the first comes, we sent against you uh, our servants of ours. In other words, when they did that first uh, co big corruption, we sent against you servants of ours, possessing great might, and they probed into your homes, and it was a promise fulfilled. It's already done. Uh, and Allah continues, uh, then what happens after that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, ثُمَّ رَدَدَنَا لَكُمْ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَمْدَدَنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَإِنْ أَسَاتُمْ فَلَأَعْمْ Then we give, we give you back a return victory over them, over your enemies. This is referring to what, is, what happened now after the, the first uh, promise was fulfilled and they were banished uh, from the land and we reinforced you with wealth and sons and made you more numerous in manpower. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here. We can only look at it very, very briefly. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now he is giving you a return victory over your enemies. We reinforce you with wealth. Be before this age, Bani Israel did not have the wealth that they are enjoying today. And the state of Israel today is getting support from so many other countries in this world, and of course, especially this country here. And we know the amount of support that this country is giving uh, and has been giving almost from the inception of, uh, of the state of Israel. You know how many millions and billions of dollars they are giving every year from our tax money uh, to, uh, to Israel. And now, apart from that, they're giving them the weapons and all of that, right? We reinforce you with wealth. So this is one thing that was not, uh, was not present before this time and before the establishment of the modern state of Israel. Uh, and sons, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, amount of uh, sons uh, that they had, uh, this, is, this is a matter you, know, you need to study the population. Uh, like they keep compl complaining about the population uh, uh, and so on, and that uh, uh, and they're, they're, they are, um, you know, uh, they're, they're anxious. They're, uh, uh, it, it, it could be a situation where all of that is erased and the Arabs uh, 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 become more numerous than them and so on, but they do have a lot of manpower. And we made you more numerous in manpower, nafira, nafir. Uh, and nafir is re re usually refers to people who are prepared for battle, people, people who are ready to go into battle. And this is the advantage that the Israelis had uh, and continue to have over the, the Arabs and over other people. Uh, and we know that you know, they have, uh, all the children, when they reach a particular age, they have to take training uh, in the army, and many of them have become reservists. Over the years, hundreds upon them, maybe thousands, uh, not hundreds, but hundreds of thousands of them uh, have taken to training in the army, and they are reservists. And many of them were called up uh, in this present conflict here. Uh, and served their time, and many of them, you know, uh, re returned back to their homes. Uh, they're trying to call up others and so on, but the situation becomes so difficult for them. The situation has changed that 
uh, people do not want to go back and serve in the, in the Israeli army, not the IDF, uh, but the IOF, <laughs> not the uh, Israeli you know, uh, uh, defense force, the Israel defense force, but the Israel offensive force, the offensive force, <laughs> because of the offense that they have been waging against. Uh, <clears throat> so Nafir refers to those people who are trained and, and prepared for battle. But now we see that many of them, although they were pre-trained and prepared and so on, they're not ready to go into battle because uh, of the defeat uh, that is happening to them, which is not being mentioned in our media, uh, in the general the mainstream media. So many things can be mentioned. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we, have, we don't have uh, endless time here. And then Allah mentions about the second promise. Uh, that second time of corruption, uh, when the final promise came. Many of the Mufassirin had explained this, Akhira means what? The hereafter. Uh, when the promise of the hereafter comes, in other words, when all of us go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter, we are resurrected and so on in the hereafter then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal with them. No, this is not so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal with them in this world. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ When the promise of the akhirah comes, and akhirah here doesn't mean the hereafter. It means the second promise. Final. Akhir means final. When the final promise comes, there was only two promises, right? Only two promises. And by the way, it's the word promise is used, promise, wa'ad, which means something good. For us, it will be something good, inshallah. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have said wa'id. Wa'id means a bad prom a promise of something bad, something evil to happen. Allah doesn't mention that word here. It says wa'ad, something good, a, a, a good promise. When the second promise comes, uh, it will not be good for them it will be good for the rest of the world. Not just for the Ummah, for the rest of the world. Wa'adul Akhirah. So this is the second and the final promise, that is the final time of corruption. After this, they will not be able to do it again. They will perhaps attempt to do that, but they will never be able to do what they have been doing in these days. And the enemy of them, their enemy, not our enemy, their enemy, the enemy of, uh, of the Zionists, the enemy of Bani Israel. Uh, they will sadden you and blacken your faces. This is when the final promise comes. Uh, and they will enter the masjid just as they had entered it the first time and they will destroy whatever they come upon, they come over. The word Allah is used here again. Ma Allah tadbira. Whatever they come over, they're able to get their hands over, uh, they will destroy it with utter destruction. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here speaks about that, uh, the, the destruction after this uh, huge mischief that they have uh, been doing in the world, it will come to an end. Their, uh, their enemy, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses, we don't know as yet who it is. Maybe it is the same uh, Palestinians, the people of Gaza, uh, and the people of the West Bank and so on. It could be them. It could be more than that. So many are, are threatening to be involved in this battle. So many others, including non-Muslim powers also, who are threatening to become involved in this conflict and it will not be good for Israel and the Israelis. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala near the end of the surah once again mentions Wa'adul Akhirah. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ الْآخِرَةِ جِئْنَا بِكُمْ لَفِيثًا And when the second promise, the final promise comes, uh, we will bring you all, uh, speaking to Bani Israel, we will bring you all together, Lafifa as a mixed crowd. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing that, has done that. They're all mixed today. And we can't go into it in detail, 
you know, how they are mixed and how they are in, even in conflict with each other today, as we, we are seeing a lot in the news, right? The conflicts that is existing in Israel itself. The Jews are, many Jews are delighted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in the Quran that will bring you all together because in the Torah it is mentioned that you know before the coming of at uh, the coming of the uh, of their Messiah they will all come back to the land to be able to live there and to rule there and so on and so on this is their hope uh, but it's a vain hope that is not what is going to happen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrects that understanding of theirs we're going to bring you back as a mixed crowd and you will be in conflict with each other and so on that is what Lafif you know, indicates uh, they will be all mixed up and in conflict with, with each other and so on. So I urge you all to study uh, the surah, the, especially these verses in the beginning and at the end of the surah. And, there the, uh, and after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this the second time in the surah, he also mentions, Qul aminu bihi aw la tu'minu. Say, Believe in it or don't believe. You have the choice. Believe in it or don't believe. Believe in what? Many of the Mufassirin say believe in it, meaning the Quran. Another interpretation, believe in this promise or don't believe in it. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ إِذَا يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ يَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَثْقَانِ سُجَّدَى وَيَقُولُونَ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنْ كَانَ وَعَدُ رَبِّنَا لَمَفْعُولًا Those who were given knowledge before it, before that promise, when it is recited to them, when these words are recited to them, يَخِرُّونَ لِلْأَفْقَانِ سُجِّدًا They fall upon their faces in sujood. Of course, this is a point where we are supposed to make sujood whenever this ayah is recited. We are supposed to make sujood at the end of the uh, a few other verses. We are supposed to make sujood at that time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still saying that when, the, when, when this is said to them, when this, this is recited to them, uh, those who have knowledge, that is the believers, the strong believers in Allah who have knowledge, when it is recited to them, they fall flat upon their faces. They make sujood. وَيَقُولُونَ And they say, Subhana Rabbina, glory be to our Lord. إِنْ كَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّنَا لَمَفْعُولًا Indeed, the promise of our Lord is bound to be fulfilled. The promise of our Lord has been fulfilled. The same word that was used earlier for the first promise. وَكَانَ وَعْلَ مَفْعُولًا it was a done deal, a promise that was already fulfilled. The same word is used here. Uh, when they fall upon their faces, the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be saying, Subhana Rabbina in kana wa'adu Rabbina la mafula. Glory be to Allah, to our Lord. Uh, indeed, the promise of our, law, of our Lord has been fulfilled. This is going to happen soon, inshallah. Perhaps many of us will be alive when this happens. Perhaps, you know, just in a short time, a few months, a couple of years, Allah knows. But inshallah, many of us are going to be alive. And when this happens, when this promise is fulfilled and all of us see it, it will be so miraculous, so astounding. Every believer should fall upon his face and make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And say, say these words, make this du dua. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to f forgive the people of Palestine and grant them the high status of shahada. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, 
wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man ba'la amma ba'd It's a very long topic but I want to say some final words uh, uh, about it You know many of us uh, think that uh, the people of Palestine have died in vain but they have not they are martyrs and if you're able to read the Arabic press uh, listen to the news whether it's Al Jazeera or any one of the other you know Arab uh, outlets <coughs> they're referring to them as shohada martyrs and so many martyrs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided to take uh, from them in this age uh, and that's a privilege that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted to them that is not granted to any uh, well actually others are perhaps uh, you know, having the same, uh, same privilege also in many other parts of the world, the world there are struggles uh, Muslims are dying and being killed needlessly and so on becoming shuhada many parts but we see all these collectively in, pa in Palestine uh, thousands of them uh, being killed they are to be envied rather than pitied for gaining that status and every one of us should, should aspire to have that status of martyrdom also anybody in the hadith says anybody who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely for martyrdom you wish sincerely for martyrdom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you the status of the martyrs even if you die in, on, on your beds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you that status and we cannot imagine the compensation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be giving to them all of those whose homes and land and country and businesses and you know everything destroyed about them their families killed and so on and so forth and they themselves killed we cannot imagine the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to them yeah, that itself is another topic by itself yeah, the martyrs and, uh, and their rewards if we think that the enem uh, enemy are flourishing and they perhaps you know think that they are, uh, they are superior and they are enjoying life because they are able to uh, defeat and kill the Palestinians and so on but they have another thing coming <laughs> for them when it comes upon them see what well, because what is happening is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you see when Allah says that don't think of the martyrs as dead but they are alive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing life to this entire world because of this situation the entire world is coming to life and the vast majority of them are saying stop this war stop this aggression against the Palestinians and uh, you know so many of them are, are voicing support for the Palestinians you know uh, and many of them many analysts including Jewish analysts Israeli analysts are saying that this is the end of Israel this war here means the end of Israel after this Israel will not survive as a state it is going to come to an end this of course doesn't mean to say that the Jews are going to come to an end that's an entirely different matter not the Jews but the state of Israel will come to an end which means when, when that happens that second time of corruption would have come to an end that is what it is recurring, referring to Allahumma nasr aqal mubina li ikhwanina fi filistin Allahumma najjihim wa a'inhum wa alayka bis sahayinati al-muhtalneen Allahumma nsur man nasr al-deen wa akhdul man khathana ibadaka al-muwahideen Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adhab al-nar سبحان ربنا رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصراط